Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and I've got my Huawei watch on. It's currently running the Android Wear 2.0 Developer Preview, which is based off of Android N. So I want to go ahead and talk about what's new with this build. It's still a preview, so there's more to come, but let's go ahead and check out Android Wear 2.0. All right, so I currently have my watch paired with my HTC 10, which I will be doing a full review video of this week. So make sure you subscribe so you're notified. In terms of the Android Wear app, it really did not get any updates. You'll see you still have your watch face choices, your apps, really just all the settings have not changed whatsoever. Now, I wanna go ahead and show off a few of the changes with Android Wear 2.0. To start, I'm gonna go ahead and swipe down. You'll notice that's different. I'll get to that in a second. And then I wanna to go to, let's go to about, just so I can show you that it is uh, on Android Wear 2.0, you'll see, and then Android OS is on N. So it is based off of Android N. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is that you can't swipe to go back at all. They got rid of that, which I'm a little upset about. It might take a little while to get used to it. to go back. Now you just have to press this button. So hopefully they still integrate that swipe back gesture. I'm not sure if they're going to or not. Notifications on Android Wear 2.0 got a bit of an update, which is why I have my Nexus 6P right here for those of you wondering. So what I'm going to do is send myself a quick message from one account to another. It's going to alert on my HTC 10 right here. And then when it does, it should come through and you'll see it's a little buggy right now. It looks a little bit skewed, it says hi right there. Sometimes it brings up, uh, there it is. So that's what it should have done. It brings up a little picture of me and lets you know that it's there. And also if I swipe up again, there it is. So that's kind of what it should have looked like right away with the picture contact. It's green, the background, the text as well. Wearing the watch was a bit of a pain, so I took it off real quick. So anyways, when you swipe down to view all your notifications, you'll see a little scroll bar there letting you know how far down you generally need to go. So as you can see, once you get to the bottom, there you have it. That's that's it. So it stops. You can scroll all the way up. A little bit more of a full screen message right there. Swiping down, like I mentioned, is a little bit different. You have airplane mode, sound. Brightness is different because you press brightness and you can press plus and it gives you an overlay of what it's going to look like after you change that brightness. To go back, well, like I said, you press the power button. Now you don't swipe back. Uh, ringer and then, of course, your settings that you can jump into. Now, the home interface got a bit of a change. Instead of pressing and holding on the screen, you swipe left or right and you're going to get a list of favorite watch faces. So left or right. Um, and then you can add them, of course. You press add more and you bring up your entire list. You can do that from your phone like I showed on my HTC 10. Now I'm gonna press the back button to go back. And right now I have elements analog and you'll notice a little settings button that's down there. We wanna jump into those to show complications off, which is something app developers can take advantage of as well. And styles, styles is just colors, classic white, red, blue. Let's go back again. I don't know why the back button doesn't go back into the settings, but here's complications. Left dial, for example, Android Wear, uh, like I said, other app developers can take advantage, so it's not just gonna say Android Wear. So let's say I want the date to show, there it is, there is that date. Let's swipe over once more, go into settings, add a complication, let's try the right dial. How about, let's see, step count, and there it shows up. So very cool, let's add one more. Maybe battery percentage, if that's an option. Um, so upper, lower, and you'll see there's a background as well. So let's try the lower slot, Android Wear, a bit of a, a bunch of steps, and then there's battery. So watch battery gets added as well. So a bunch of different complications you can add. Like I said, app developers in other Android Wear apps can take advantage of it. And speaking of apps, press that button to get to your app drawer, and it's a bit of a different uh, style. So it's rounded on a round watch. You'll notice that bar is, uh, the scroll bar is on the right, showing all of your apps that you can go into. Uh, let's go ahead and go into one such as, let's see, one that's not going to be a big deal. How about settings, I guess? You'll notice that animation's a little bit different. Going back again brings you back to that app list. Let's try stopwatch. And you can press play, pause. Go back again with that button and there you have it. So that would be the new app drawer as well. Something else I wanna make note of is there's now an integrated keyboard when you reply. So for example, let's say you tap on an app such as Hangouts to reply to this message. You can have some quick replies right there. Also, if you swipe down from the bottom, it brings up reply or view entire conversation. Now let's say we wanna go ahead and hit reply. Check this out. So you have a keyboard option, smileys, voice, and then quick replies, but let's choose a keyboard and there it is. So there's the keyboard, very crowded, very cramped. Let's try saying, hey, it does have the swipe. Hey there, it worked. So I would think this is a lot to get used to. If you have bigger fingers, you might have a little bit of trouble, but let's try just tapping. You are cool. 
Okay, so R was a little bit different. I would think swipe would be the way to go with this, but also there's a handwriting mode, so let's get to that. To do so, I'm going to press the back button, um, press the back button again, press the back button again, and swipe down from the top, go into settings, and let's go to language and input, input methods, I should say. And then we're gonna wanna go to current, and to enable it, you hit choose keyboards, and then you can enable handwriting mode. So I did that, and we're gonna select handwriting. Now we're gonna press the back button, press the back button, press the back button, go back into that message, if I can get there, whoops. Apparently you can interact with those elements as well. Like I said, for steps, you can select it. I actually didn't know that, so glad I did that on accident. Let's try reply again, go back, but you'll see that this is a lot of steps, something I kind of wanted to make note of. It says draw big letters, H, I start scrolling, T, H, E, R, E, oh, and I'll say check, and we'll see kind of what comes up there. It's gonna try and read my terrible handwriting. Like that one's gonna take a little bit while it used to. So there, that worked. Um, thumbs up, T, H, U, M, B, S, space, U, P. Hopefully that worked, thumbs up. All right, so give a thumbs up because that worked. <laughs> but that's it. So you got handwriting, you got a keyboard mode. It's still a little buggy. It's just a developer preview so they can start interacting with those elements like I mentioned right here. So we can tap on a calendar. It should uh, open up calendar. It looks like it doesn't. The battery doesn't. Steps does though, because there's multiple apps that you can complete actions with. So that's it, Android Wear 2.0 preview. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give that a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. I'll link to in the description of the video below. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.